Hello world. Today I want to talk to you guys about STKO for OpenSea. So STKO is a pre and post processor for OpenSea that I think it's going to be a game changer for the OpenSea community. It's a paid for pre and post processor. It's closed source in its visuals, but it's open source in, in its set of plugins and in all the data it generates and in all its, uh, the, the, everything you generate with it is open source. It's going to be a real game changer for OpenSea. And I want to illustrate this just by going through a, a short modeling exercise for you to just see how, how to work on, on SDKO. Now, uh, I'm not endorsed by Asdea, the, the creators of the software. There's an Italian company. They just contacted me uh, as a developer and uh, they wanted me to try out the program. And this is just me spontaneously wanting to, uh, you know, give them a shout out for this good software that they've created. So. I'm just going to go ahead and make a small example. I want to create a cube and load it with a little point sort with a little point load in one of its corners and see what happens from there. I just want to show you how easy it is to use uh, STKO if you're a user of OpenSea. So that's what the big caveat. If you're, if you're not a user of OpenSea, it's going to take more training. But the good thing is that I think it's going to ease the learning curve for OpenSea too. So here we go. Um, I'm going to create a little box that I want to mesh and apply a load to. So I'm going to go for the parallel uh, primitive. Put a point there, point there, a little point there. The dimensions doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just, just want to go for the example. So I, I've created a geometry that I'm going to mesh and apply a load to. Uh, I'm going to create a definition. The definition is going to be, in this case, uh, a linear time series. This STKO kind of follows the, the order of the commands that you would use in OpenSea. So I'm just going to create a linear, linear time series that I can then apply to any load pattern that I want. Uh, I'm going to add physical properties to this cube. So let's create a material. This material is going to be a linear elastic isotropic material. And we're going to ha have a modulus of uh, 2000 to the 9, whatever units you like. 0.25 for the Poisson's ratio. Uh, as you can see here, if you click on the little help box down here, it, this is going to actually take you to the documentation for OpenSeas. So it's going to link directly into the, what the command does. Let's go back here. Okay. Now I need to assign this. Oh, I didn't give it a name. So let's go here, elastic material. And we're going to assign this elastic material to this uh, box. So we need to select and then assign. There we go. Now we're going to assign elements. So as in everything, the, the tip here is to go from uh, the top to the bottom and from left to right as you define things. That's kind of how it works. So we're going to go here for the elements, assign, uh, assign standard bricks. Let's call these bricks and select and assign. There we go. Uh, conditions is where you apply loads and where you apply boundary conditions. So here I'm just going to create a new force load, nodal force load. We're going to apply a minus 1000 whatever units load and apply it there. And we're going to call that FZ. There we go. And in conditions, we're also going to add a um, a constraint so a single point constraint fix three-dimensional and we're gonna fix all the degrees of freedom and we're gonna do that for the bottom face of the box here now if you want to see the conditions you've applied you can go to the conditions tab and you'll see a little arrow representing the load you've applied and you will you'll also see that the bottom face has something assigned to it so that's good uh, this I forgot to uh, give a name for the fixed condition. Let's just call it fixed. There we go. And now we go into the analysis. First step of analysis is to create a recorder. So the, the people at Asdea had have created a new MPCO recorder that everyone can use in OpenSeas. We're going to give it a name, results. And this is an HDF5 recorder that I think it's a, it's a game changer also for OpenSeas because it pretty much collects everything you want into a single HDF5 file that you can then read easily in Python or MATLAB or whatever you want to do. This is an idea 
that I also wanted to create since my PhD uh, back in Davis. I, I did something similar for the software we we're using there. Uh, we're just going to add the displacements, not the rotations. Let's just get displacements out. That's all. We're going to call this uh, the recorder. So this is a very good uh, thing that uh, the people at, at Asdea has have given the Open Seas community totally for free. Uh, this is really nice, the, the, the new recorder. So we added a recorder. Let's also add a load pattern for our load. So we select the time series that we previously defined, and we are going to also select the force that we created. And let's just call this loading. OK, another another boundary condition. In this case, we're going to be doing the constraint pattern. So SP constraint, let's fix all those nodes at the bottom. This is how you do it. Add one fixed constraint, and let's call this fixed, uh, fixed pattern, or whatever you want to call it. Pattern. OK. We have uh, the recorders, we have loading, we have uh, boundary conditions, uh, we've defined elements and material. Last thing we need to define is the analysis. So the analysis, the default analysis is static using plain constraints, RCM number, uh, the UMF pack, system of equation solver, we're going to change the algorithm to linear because it's a linear problem. And uh, we don't need a test, but let's just leave that as it is. We're going to use the load control integrator with uh, 0.1 for the load time step. And uh, with 10 increments, that's going to leave it leave us at a load factor of 1 by the end of the analysis. So this is uh, the analysis options, I guess. There we go. At this point, we save our file. Let's create a new folder. Call it uh, review stko. In that folder, I'm going to just uh, store the test. And finally, we need to mesh this. So in order to mesh this, let's define uh, the global seed. The global seed just tells the mesher uh, how to subdivide the problem. So we're going to go for three subdivisions globally. There we go. So if uh, once again, if I go to the global seed, you'll see that each of the edges is divided into three elements. And the internal mesh is going to be propagated from there. Uh, the final thing we need to do is to make sure the mesh is a hexahedral mesh. So we're going to select this solid right here, and we're going to change the topology to a structured hexahedral mesh. And uh, this should do it. There we go. We have our mesh. We've created 64 nodes and 117 elements. I guess that includes maybe all the faces and all the lines and nodes it's also counting all of that okay so now we go for the analysis so let's just run the analysis for the analysis we need to uh, select the folder where the program what it's going to do it's going to generate all the open tcl input files or the tickle input, input files run open seas you can write, run it internally through stko or you can go to the command line and run it from there and then in that folder also, you're going to get your results. So let's go here and just create a, a folder called results. We choose that. And what happened there? There we go. What happened is I, I had forgot to assign it. So the way I, I assign is you go to the physical property, you select what you want, where you want to assign, and you go assign. There's several ways of doing this, and there's a lot of tutorials, but that's how I solved it. So OK, so if we run the analysis. You can see down there the command line arguments that were passed onto, and it seems it was successful. So now in order to look at the results, we go into post-processor mode. And here we need to open the database that was created by this run. And that's the results.mpco uh, file. And then from here, you go to plot, and we're going to create a new plot group. And in that plot group, we're going to do a surface plot, just like this. So in the surface plot, we can drop down this menu and select the deformation scale. So we have uh, deformations 10 to minus 9. So if we amplify by 10 to 9, 
we should start to see deformations. Let's go here for, uh, we're at step at time one. Okay, so there you see, if, as, I, as I increase the deformation factor, you can see what's going on there. So that's, that's uh, how you, in a nutshell, use this STKO POS processor. So to use the POS processor, you can use it on any model you've defined before, just as long as you include this MPCO recorder. Now the MPCO recorder, you can see inside here, is the is all the definition files, as I, as I mentioned earlier, and the results.mpco file. Let's just close STKO for now. Uh, let's just call that post.spd, whatever that is. Okay. And then I should be able now to take a look at what's going on in here. So where is this nodes, materials, elements, definitions, analysis steps. So in analysis steps, you'll see that the recorder was defined to be MPCO. That's the name of the, the file that's, that you're gonna output and you requested for displacements. This is something you can use in OpenSeas right now as an alternative to classical recorders in order to store your results in the MPCO file format which is a very nice file format. If, if you can take a look in here, I'm in Ubuntu uh, 18.04. And in this OS, I have, I, I think it's available for Linux, Mac and Windows too. So I, I can use HDF Compass software to view the database where the, the results are stored. And you can see in here that there's, uh, the whole model is basically stored in here. So you have the nodes, the coordinates are stored in that data set format and uh, you have um, the results on the nodes, displacements, you can get per time step all the nodal displacements. HDF5 is such a nice format to store scientific results. So I just want to give uh, give the, the people at Asdea, uh, you know, a shout out for, for all the work they've done. They've put together this amazing piece of software and they've given OpenSeas new elements, new shells, new recorders. This is a big deal. And this is all thought to work uh, in parallel. So it's all, they've, they've, been, they've been designing this with the future in mind so that you can run large models using OpenSeas SP. So that kind of ends this review. I'm just really excited about STKO and all the things and all the movement is going to bring to the open seas and uh, yeah, I'll be using this for sure. And with that in mind, I'll see you guys next.